Okay, so we were just talking about sexlessness in monogamous relationships. So we want to go over that a little bit more. A few tips and tricks on how to eliminate that from your life. Yeah, and yeah. also let's just mention that is so freaking common. And if you have like, it's going to happen in every relationship. Every monogamous relationship eventually, at some point, it could be six months down the road. It could be 10 years down the road. There's going to be some sexlessness. There's going to be a lack of desire. Yeah. And it could be cut for a number of reasons. Like you could just get plain old bored. There could be a lot of resentment that builds up because of the way that each partner is um, entitled or acting entitled to sex or demanding sex or not um, like supporting the other partner. Yeah. Um, So like a long-term investment to avoid sexlessness would be to always support if the other person isn't horny or doesn't want to have sex with you. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're always um, approaching it from a positive angle. You know, when a woman is tired, this is just one example, um, and she's in a partnership and she gets home after a long day and her partner, you know, is kind of bugging her to have sex and she says, you know, no, and then he makes her feel bad, um, that's going to build resentment. That's going to put a close side on her pussy, right? That's going to make her not want to have sex even more. Or if he says things like, oh, you never want to have sex with me anymore, or what, you're not attracted to me, you know, these kind of negative connotations yeah. um, are not good. So instead, like, be like, oh, do you need some time alone with your vibrator? Do you want to put your feet up while I finish the dishes? Like, these kind of things where you're fine with the no and you accept that she doesn't want to have sex can go a long way to the future, to making her feel like she will have sex with you or that she has the energy or the desire. Yeah, she's not rejecting you. She is literally exhausted. (laughs) And um, rather than, because I think, you know, it's common to feel when someone doesn't want to have sex with you, you kind of feel, oh, a little bit bad inside. But if you can avoid projecting any negativity onto the situation and rather say, oh, my God, you're tired? What can I do to help you not be tired anymore? Right? That's a positive reaction. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, my God. Like, is there, like you like you said, can I help with the dishes? Can I, is it, is there something, you know, throughout the week that I can help you with so that you have more energy? Yeah. You know? Or um, you can go 50% of the way and offer an assist. Yeah, that's also a... a right? So uh, for me, as a woman, like, I like guys, so I would offer, like, to assist with his hand job. If he wants to jerk off, I'll, like, kiss his neck, I'll be in the room with him, like, I'll turn the porn on for him, like, maybe I'll talk dirty to him, maybe I'll even get into it. Yeah. Or maybe I won't. Yeah. But I can offer that if I have the energy for that, so that um, he feels like I'm supporting him. And he can offer that to me, too. Yeah, and you might not feel like you've been doing that. Um, and <laughs> if that's too much for you, which is totally understandable and totally okay, and you don't have to explain why, um, you can say, you can enthusiastically suggest that the person goes and jerks off. Yeah. By themselves. Yeah. People should do it way more. Yeah. Like, if anything, just do that. Don't even have sex with each other. You know, it's not a big deal. Like, you know, as single people, as a person who doesn't have a lot of sex, that's what you do. You yeah. jerk off. Yeah, totally. So it's not just because you have um, a relationship or a partner doesn't make you entitled to use them as a... Um, a jerk off tool. I, I want to say that, but it sounds a bit extreme. <laughs> well, also, when you're jerking off, you're still having sex. You're just having yeah. sex with yourself. Yeah. And it is different. But don't forget that. Like, for me, I'm saying I'm sexless right now. But truly, like, I do have sex with myself and I am sexually satisfied. So uh, that's one thing to remember. And then also uh, remembering that you can go have um ex- adventures together like sexual adventures together that involve maybe you want to go to a sex club maybe you want to hire a sex worker maybe you want to have a threesome maybe you want to uh go make out in your car yeah there's many different things that you can do and some of those things there might not even be an expectation of sex afterwards it's just something exciting and new that you want to try and sort of bring up the the level the excitement yeah (laughs) yeah. levels up when you do something together that you haven't done before you see each other from a different perspective and that could ignite your desire again so it could be as simple as going for a bike ride if you haven't done that before you maybe see each other the way you used to see each other when you first met because things were new your brain needs that novelty uh to experience desire again sometimes so having the willingness to participate in that participate in new adventures together whether they're sexual or not and going from there yeah 
yeah. So hopefully, good luck with yeah, that. good luck. <laughs> Let us know how it goes. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.